Hey everyone, this is Happers here, and uh, uh, before we get to the third part of the Great Cave Offensive of the uh, Let's Play uh, Kirby Superstar, I wanted to uh, address something really quickly. It, it's, it's nothing too important, but it is something that I feel like I, I that should be mentioned before um, we actually get into, well, the, the meat of this subgame. Now... Coming up is what I consider the my least favorite part of the Great Cave Offensive by a long shot, but and it's mostly because of one reason, although there are a few reasons, and as I'll highlight, but one of the treasures that is near the end of the segment, or it's one of the last treasures that I get in Old Tower, uh, where I have the cannon that... Uh, you need to shoot yourself out off, out of in order to get to the um, treasure just outside the room, inside the room. Um, I did something differently in that area, and I didn't do it the actual way you're supposed to. Now, I end up highlighting my thoughts about that, and now the, I am actually recording this post-commentary that you're hearing right now, um, a week after I actually did the post commentary of the segment, which was I think last week, and uh, on the day that I'm recording this right now, uh, I was playing Kirby Superstar Ultra, and I actually figured out what the deal is as far as that treasure and how it actually is supposed to work. So if I have any overreactions regarding the helper AI and the fact that I'm mentioning that I don't like this treasure in particular, uh, I apologize. Uh, I, I, there's, I don't know what else to really say, but uh, I do lessen my stance as far as it being my least favorite a bit, but I still am not a big fan of uh, this section of the Great Cave Offensive. So my rage that you'll be hearing in this video is maybe a little over exaggerated but at the same time well that's just kind of what i wanted to get out I, I'm, I'm not sure if this is just me rambling about something that shouldn't be a big deal but i just figure i had to kind of mention it anyway so um uh this uh been Tappers, and we will be moving on to the actual regularly scheduled program that is the let's play of kirby superstar so we'll see ya <laughs> Why? Why am I doing this part? But, okay, I, I'm gonna stop whining, but I know I'm gonna continue to whine. So, we are now at the Great Cave Offensive's third area of the sub game. This is the Old Castle. Or, no, I'm sorry, this is Old Tower. Or Ancient Tower. I, I guess it just depends on the translation. This, by and large, is my least favorite area in the entire sub game by a country mile, except I'm probably exaggerating it because it's only mostly a few things. The main reason why I don't like this area, it is fucking huge! And I'm sorry for swearing and losing my power-ups like some sort of amateur, but I really don't like this area at all. I mean, the main reason this ended up being remotely tolerable is because I did some practice on this. Spoiler, this isn't the actual first time I've ever gotten 100%. This is actually the second time ever I've done it. But we can relax because we got a rice bowl and we're going to have some tasty Japanese food. Well, we don't actually have any food because instead we got to settle for these dweebs that come out of complete freaking nowhere. As fortunately, we get to take advantage of the powers that are yo-yo uh, and hit him like 10 hundred thousand times in order to progress. It is possible, I'm sure, to skip that area, but um, also, um, this area has two different uh, ways you can enter. Also, we got another uh, seasonal hearts as we just drop, get the drop on bonkers. Typically, you would probably enter that room from the other side of the entrance, but because I went this way, 
I got the switch and could just skip the whole avoiding having bonkers or myself touching that bomb block and ruining everything. So, nothing to worry about there. I mean, these treasures here don't look too bad, but we're going to get into some pretty annoying ones coming up not too much longer. But, I get rid of the... Uh, yo-yo power as soon as uh, my helper gets his ass up here. Uh, I'm really sorry that I'm swearing, but actually, no. We can just do that, and I grab the mirror power up mostly because there are a ton of these stupid jungle bombs or coconut bombs. I'm gonna not make any reference to DK64, I promise. Um, as we're nearly dead, I should mention that a lot of the time I'm Usually being reckless, but mostly because I don't even know why I'm even mentioning this. But it's really fortunate that each floor right here, climbing up this tower, has a piece of wall meat and um, floor peaches. I, I don't even know what I'm talking about, but um, it, I don't know why I got rid of the power up. I think it's maybe because I wanted. Uh, okay, I, I just randomly was killing Wildies. I'm committing genocide for some reason. But I think this is where I screwed up my route because I lost the power-up. And, well, spoiler, I'm sort of... The way I did my route was that I was sort of going by kind of what the speedrun does, except that some of my ability is, like, very non-existent, so it's not even consistent. But... What is consistent is that these Gorals will get the drop on you because there's almost no room to navigate. But I, I should probably mention, actually no, I shouldn't mention it just yet because you'll maybe, I'll, I'll showcase it in just a moment. Assuming that, okay good, I, I didn't grab the ninja power for whatever reason. I think I was trying to figure out where to go, putting myself at risk once again. Uh, a lot of this area, and well, a lot of areas in just this sub-game in particular, have areas where you need a power-up in order to get to a certain thing. But this area, this old tower, takes it to the extreme. Well, actually, I don't think it really takes it that far, but it, it goes pretty far in some areas. And there's certain things that I don't think the game really should be requiring you to do, because... And... One treasure I would say that I've ranted on most about, which we'll get to, I think, near the end of this part, probably, hopefully, but, um, yeah, that door there I don't want to go to yet because it actually goes to the last area of the, of the Great Cave Offensive. Uh, I don't remember the name off the top of my head because I'm kind of not, oh, Garden Area, and I'm automatically spoiling it for absolutely no reason, but... I mean, some of the treasures are still easy, but one of the reasons why I've never 100%ed this is because of some of the treasures. Like, this one really isn't all that bad, but is incredibly annoying. And, god, I can't imagine how people even do this area in a speedrun with Jet or Wing. I don't really remember, but... I mean, fortunately, I only did it on the second try, not hitting sleep, in order to get Mr. Saturn, which is... I've only ever known about that thing because it appears in Smash Bros. Melee, and that's about it. And I better not say any more because even mentioning that game apparently warrants all the backlash for some really stupid reason because elitism or some other nonsense, but I don't really care because it just doesn't really matter to me. I don't know why people have to complain about it, but... Yeah, just be very careful when going up this tower because you may have the random stony try to drop on you for reasons. And we grab the stone power up. And I don't know if I've ever really mentioned this, or I probably have, but I do love the hats that are uh, associated with all the cur- I'm not really sure how that hit me. I could have sworn that he was not close, and for some reason I wasn't thinking I was landing on that edge. But we get some Final Fantasy armor, except it's just called armor, so don't really worry about it. And all of a sudden we go from a tower to some sort of weird moon setting that 
I'm not sure how it exists in this subspace continuum, except that it really isn't that. Also, some really wacky physics if you're not careful, because that's kind of how it works. And we get a treasure box in a treasure box, with a treasure box inside, and another tre- Okay, I, I will stop, but... I want to say this area has a bunch of treasures where they replace something with something else. Like, the Autumn Star, which we grabbed, is replaced by a three-star cane, which I guess is supposed to reference uh, Squeak Squad for some reason. And the Rice Bowl is a broken bowl. Because that's clearly relevant and all that. But now there's this area, which, I mean, I should probably mention it, but I may not mention it just yet because... I don't think we get what we need just yet. I mean, as far as how to get there, but instead we're doing things a little differently. Now, I mentioned that one door we skipped in the main hub area is uh, the uh, exit towards the, um, uh, what's it called, uh, the next area. But now we have a boss within the area that doesn't really necessarily need to be beaten. This is Camellio Arm, or... Gamilio arm? I don't know. There's like several pronunciations with this boss, and for once in probably the lifetime of this game, you'll actually see a helper actually do something good, like kill the boss. But yeah, I didn't really get to mention Camellio arm, but he does a lot of rolling around. He can turn invisible after a while. He can shoot paintballs, which I didn't get to show, but we will see Camellio arm again. So I'll get to mention more about him later. And he can also kind of just move all about in a very irritating way. Speaking of irritating, there's this room, which you need to race against the clock in order to keep that door open for a treasure. But as you will soon see, this area is very freaking annoying. And I have to set this to the goofy... Uh, sand desert music because it's completely fitting and I should be probably doing some sort of meme branding except I kind of do but I won't do it. I hate this area. I hate this area. Old Tower is really awful. I'm not sure why I hate it except I really do know how to hate it because it's really annoying. You get lost easily. You have power-ups that are required all over the place and just get in the way and you need to have combos and stuff. You need to learn all the mechanics. It's really annoying and I hate it but I'm not sure what I'm even talking about at this point. And getting ninja, 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 and all the other terrible stuff that's annoying. Except I'm not even doing it right because I should be sucking in the enemy and hitting him from a distance. Distance, distance. Rampage, rampage. Uh, I'm quoting Rom Mithril for some really odd reason, and I didn't quite make it. Or make it. Or make it. And fine. And then I had this attempt, which was going so well, and then this asshole just freaking knocks me out. And for some reason, my life bar isn't white, because I don't stand a ghost of a chance of doing this at all. At all. But then I think I finally do it on this attempt, because I think I got lucky, and I even got a slight damage boost. And we're done with the irrelevant ranning speeding up part. And we get a model ship, which I think is something that Kirby uses in this game. I totally spoiled it, except not really. Actually, no, it doesn't reference anything at all. But, yeah. So, one thing about the tower, and I've already mentioned it, is that you can get lost very easily. I mean, certain rooms I thought I knew of, I didn't even know where I was going. Also, you want to be heading to the middle, otherwise you will fall to your doom. So, be careful of that. I don't mean to be yawning, but this is an area I just kind of don't care about at all, and I kind of went the wrong way, because I want to actually go in this corner as all the brown birds continue to pester me, because there's actually another treasure room, which you don't really need a power. If you know where it is, then you can just go about your normal daily life, but we can get Jet again, because that's pretty cool. We need either Jet, we neither need a Jet, Fire, and other heated sources in order to actually be able to see this hole right here. Fortunately, we don't have to open a door, so we can just remember it and then just go in it. But I wanted to make sure I showed it, so it wasn't one of those, you didn't show how to do it, but you can yell at me about something else coming 
soon, later-ish, but it's not going to take that long, so it'll be relatively soon. Because it's probably just me acting like I don't know how to do it, or just not even attempting to do it right, but it's just me thinking that the game mechanic is... Well, I'll, I'll get to it in a minute, as we just phase through all the cannons, because, well, once we make a movement, then we act as though we actually do matter. But, for some reason, I actually have to go to the sides to enter the room, door, thing. And I do cut ahead because it's me mostly getting lost. Actually, you will see me cutting a lot in uh, this part. Also, I gotta be careful not to shoot anything, otherwise I would get the ultimate pain. But now, here's something that I don't particularly care for, is that there's a bomb block here, but only certain power-ups can hit the block through a wall that you wouldn't actually be able to do it, and I sort of sequence break, except maybe this was intentionally how you do it. Except I don't really care to remember how. Although I think in speedruns recently there's a sort of a sequence break. Yeah, there's supposed to be a bomb block kind of not at the entrance but further back. So there is that. Also, we get the Sunset Boulevard broken bridges for some really odd reason. I don't really know why this bridge suddenly crumbles for absolutely no reason. But we have a treasure chest right there, but in order to get it, we actually need a different power-up. And this one I'm okay with because... I mean, it's not something totally obscure, but... It's at least something reasonable, but there's another one later which just requires way too much leg work, and it does bother me. But then again, this whole place is freaking huge. Like here, in order to get that, you need cutter and stone or hammer, but there's actually a better way of doing it, except I haven't done it yet, because I think this was an area where I got completely lost in what I was doing, and instead getting comboed by... One well, of those giant uh, bear enemies. And yeah, I kind of already make a, a point of saying that I really hate navigating the uh, old tower part of this area. And as you can see, we still have like five treasures that we still need to get in this area. At least I think that's how many. But the reason why I got lost was because, um, as soon as I show it, was I was actually supposed to go back to that one room where there was a as soon as I figure it out, except that for some reason I'm meandering about. I think eventually, okay, I think here, as soon as I get my life back in store, and share it with Smear, because that's a cool pun or something like that, I actually have to head back in this room with a bunch of lag, and I sequence break by hitting this bomb block so I can go in here, Inside, there's a treasure chest up there, along with uh, one of these uh, laser beam enemies that I guess somehow ricochet an enemy off of a stony. I have no idea, but we get a King's Cape, which is apparently supposed to be King DDD's cape, except... Yeah, I mean, look, look right there. For some reason, it now decides it wants to reflect off an enemy. I, I mean, I don't really get it, per se, but... Again, sorry for the awning. Just be stretching out. But what we need to do is we need to grab the stony ability. Give this to our partner, I think. And for some, okay, we, actually, we need mirror and stone, or at least I use mirror because there's a sequence break which I decide to do because I don't like the idea of using the other, or just rather, I didn't bother finding out if it actually works. Oh wait, actually, we need stone in order to get down here, which is pretty much the only way, and I'm getting the coordinates completely wrong. And we get the gold crown, which is just a crown that's not exactly relevant in any sort of form. I don't know. <laughs> but... Yeah, there is a lot of free-falling and other meandering about, but 
eventually, once we get the last couple of treasures, we can bid farewell, or no, not even farewell, we can bid good riddance to the old tower, ancient tower place. But yeah, we need stone or hammer to get down here. And out of boredom, I just am like, can this go any faster? But it's kind of ironic that I try to say I'm going faster because there's actually something I do last part of the Grid Cave Offensive, which is really weird and I'm not sure exactly what happens. Except I know what happens, it's just I'm not sure how I got it to happen. So, for some reason I got lost not remembering where I had to go, or just rather I don't want to get sniped by these uh, pyro, pyro Leos, except I kind of forgot the names because I don't know why. But... Now, originally what we want is the firepower, well actually no, not yet, because we actually have to fight this new mini-boss called um, Jukid, which is basically a suplex boss, which, uh, yeah, there's the suplex ability. Originally I wanted to say, shouldn't that be the fighter ability, but actually that wouldn't make sense because, well, the Iron Man um, doesn't exactly have throwing moves or anything like that. It just kind of fights and pops stars out. So this is actually where we would need the fire ability, or rather the fire helper. There's supposed to be a way you're supposed to get the helper to attack underwater because they don't shoot water bubbles. They move like regular helpers and stuff. But because I convinced or just certain that it doesn't seem like you can control the ability of the helpers, which I think I almost want to say that Superstar Ultra does better. Instead, I go for a sequence break using the mirror ability, which is, which may as well be pixel perfect, but I have done this before, and as you can see, not right there, but yeah, you have to be sure you're dashing, and eventually, if you do it right, and also keep your dash, you can break the block and go to where that cannon would shoot you, which is, well, spoiler, right in this area. Which makes absolutely no sense whatsoever, but it doesn't really matter because we got the sword, which I think is actually called the Falchion in Superstar Ultra. And if you don't know what that is, it's actually the dragon slaying sword in most of the Fire Emblem games which I don't, I almost never talk about Fire Emblem, but it's a series that I really do like. And we get the Warrior Shield in this current filled area as we're almost blown into a hole and we do lose our ability, but who cares because we are pretty much on our way out of this stupid area, except that I don't bother keeping the fire ability because, well, I got sniped on the way out. One thing I didn't mention was that uh, zebra mask up there, the white and black mask, is actually supposed to be the Phantos mask. Pretty much a reference to the Phantos enemy in uh, Super Mario Bros. 2, the uh, international version, and not Lost Levels version. Well, actually, it's not even called Lo Mario 2 Lost Levels, it's just Mario Bros. Lost Level. I don't even know why I'm debating that. But... With only a few seconds left, we are finally getting out of this area. And in order to do so, we take the minecart and take the scenic route because I don't have the jet ability anymore, but it's a lot more interesting. And we also get to see the trolley ability, which is just running over enemies. Because naturally, running over bears that sleep in the middle of the tracks. And I couldn't cut this well, so we will see you next time for part four.